Either way, you're cutting one. wave in lane. Earth it's shaker, it's an earth. That's hype, but... Planet's not an Earth Spirit player because there's no way the Shaker pick is better than into, the Earth Spirit pick. Into Rubik, into Morphling is a little dangerous. Yeah. Because you can, you can, you're gonna get an eggs on Morph, so he's going yeah. to get the Enchant Totem steal and do the old eggs, you know, Morph Shaker combo. Planet, Planet, dude, you gotta learn how to play Earth Spirit. I know he's bad in this patch, but sometimes the game presents itself. Sometimes. I mean, my biggest problem with the Shaker and the Earth Spirit is that you made your off lane much weaker. Especially with Shaker, like you're playing into Undying and Morphling. I think they needed to pick two spellcasters that could kind of spam out the Undying to let Visage lane. Now yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to go anymore. It's either that or you entirely dodge the lane. Yeah. That's the nature of this last pick sniper. They didn't have anything for it, and then they were forced to pick that roaming melee type of hero. So the melee heroes like or Shaker do enable Visage, but I think as this game progresses, they don't have solutions to this sniper. All they have is the Ember Spirit. That's the only thing they have to get on top of him. Yeah, but you're talking about nothing to say, Ember Spirit. That's a big one. He did pop off big time. He yesterday. did. Massive. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say whoever wins their lanes wins this game, Sheeps. All right. Anything to add to that, Sheep? <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree with that. I think it's how well of a game Sniper has. Like, if Sniper dies like three times, I think they're kind of like done. Cause that's, that's the number, magic number. What do you have? Like, you have a Morphling who's not going to make plays. You have a Sniper that's died three times and can't make plays. What, what do you do? What do you do? Man, what, what is he gonna do? What is this game going to be? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see together with SVG and Cap. But first, it's a weekend, so let's enjoy some pleasant pandas on this lovely Saturday. Just be free and do whatever you want. Sit down. Wow, you need to do that, ma. Me, ma. Sit down. Gaming Gladiators is undefeated against PSG LGD in this season, but. That was the PSG LGD that had a different offlaner. Now PSG LGD has a secret weapon, Avery. It's the stone face killer in you. Wow, that was hype. And he's playing a stone form visage. From a man who is a self-proclaimed zeal fan. Been converted quite fast. I've been, what he won me over you? the last series. What convinced you? Was it his gameplay or that Chucky sent you this? It's that damn smile. If you want to get good bias casting, capcast at paypal.com. He'll boost you up real quick. <laughs> I wish that was my pay. <laughs> Who owns it? I don't know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Avery, you son of a bitch. That was the first thing I did when I started working with your ass. <laughs> Took all my socials. I'm straight. Took my OnlyFans too. Oh, and TS? Gonna get the D Ward here? He's in a. Oh, oh. Ward standoff. Oh, oh. All right. And Keep TS. it up. He'll Nothing let you have it. it. He'll let you have it, Quinn. And he also let you have the better matchup Ember Spirit versus Sniper. Nothing to say. He popped off on Ember Spirit before, Avery, but he's up against one of the best laners in the world and a bad matchup, I would say. Yeah, this looks tough. He skirted out of that Ember Timber one, but he might not be so lucky this time around unless the Shaker roam comes through. That's what I kind of expect from LGD. Talk about this last pick, Shaker. Yeah, it's a tough Shaker game. The one thing you can do is he can roam mid. Because Shaker, in theory, is good at it. I was saying theory because he has a visage and visage isn't a hero you want to leave alone. So, planet's decisions are 
very important for LGD in terms of building up the early game and making sure Quinn does not get out of control and NTS has a game to play. And you get into that mid game where the fissures plus the, the slight chains can maybe prove too problematic for gaming to deal with. Because they don't really have a way of shutting NTS down in the fights outside of Morphling turning into him and chaining him up. Mm. There is a lot of Morphling options in this game, that's for sure. And I think a lot of other teams, they would have considered that Morphling just going mid, but Quinn doesn't really like playing the hero. He does play it, but it's not its not his style, you know? And Duracho, this guy probably just like insta-clicks it in the draft. I feel like it would be more Quinn style the way Morphlings are playing nowadays. Right, with the phylactery builds and just like... Yeah, but you're either a Morphling player or you're not. You know? Okay. It, it's, a, it's a way of life. Way of life, wow. So Quinn just won't be converted to that life. Instead, he's going to be playing the hoo hoo ha ha life instead. And uh, putting the screws here to old nothing to say. <laughs> he's got the old high ground. Look at him. He already walked around to the other side. He's like, I know what you're doing. You're going to shrapnel me off. I'm going to run down the river instead. He is missing some CS for all of this work, but uh, just kind of how it be. Tofu, really nice body blocks. Shiro walks away with just enough mana to throw another Mystic Snake, but. Not super happy with this lane. Pulls are happening bottom to try and dodge this Undying matchup. Pretty obnoxious for gaming. So they want to reset the Equilibrium. This is going to be a full double wave on Duraccio. And the wave will get held by Mew up top. So pretty happy about that outcome. Even a Fissure to go his way just to mess with him. He hit the Undying too. Now he's making a run for the next creep wave. Did not manage to draw the aggro entirely away, but... He'll keep trying. I mean, if he can re reset the rope. I can't even speak. I got my tongue fissured. If he can reset <laughs> the waves, <laughs> All right. then that'll buy him the space to go for the mid game. Yeah. But he needs the equilibrium very far back for new, so he doesn't just get immediately gone on with Tombstone and killed. And then you're giving First Blood an extra XP to Morphling. That is a very bad scenario. So now Planet got the wave back bottom. New is happy. Unlikely to get dived in this situation. Never mind. He literally gets He's instantly dove and killed. Definitely getting dove in that situation. <laughs> Tombstone drop down. That is, you're going to be your first blood. Meanwhile, mid lane matchup, nothing to say. Oh. Stays alive and planet. Not going to be able to collect. The Fisher ah, block was nice. Worst case scenario on both ends of that roam. They don't secure it enough for the Visage who goes down to the Tombstone anyway. Though I don't know if Shaker would have prevented that. And you don't get this mid kill. Yeah. And Shaker missed the XP bottom while the Visage was dead. Not a good sequence for LGD at all. At least the safe lane seems to be going pretty well as the double range shields combine for a cheeky little pickoff with the blood grenade. Yep, top CS as well. 23 and 1 for the Dusa. So, getting a lot. And Quinn will get zoned off a little bit here, but the damage feels like it's been done and planning not finding the openings. I mean, it looks like Quinn's going to walk back to base, and honestly, you kind of need to get. No I feel like this is the most dangerous part of the lane for nothing to say. Right? Like the love that level four, level five area, sniper's really gonna start turning up the heat on you. You could just give him a free six. Quinn just destroyed him so hard in the CS though. Even if he walks to base, he's still gonna be decently ahead here. Yeah, that's true. Eight denies on top of he's almost ten CS ahead. Celery with the D ward as well. Gaming finding a lot of little advantages here as Duraccio continues to free farm. So does Ace. That is usually a recipe for this team's success. This greedy shaker pick is not paying off in the early game. We'll see how it fares later on. But for now, skirmish power is probably going to be in gaming's hands. How much can they push that advantage? Or do they just stack it up? Something else this team tends to do. Like, even sometimes when they're ahead, they win the lanes. They just stack and then just get even more ahead. Would not surprise me if that's the case, considering they have the Beastmaster to clear through it. Sniper, pretty decent at doing those as well. And here is the Tombstone Flank. Slowing down Shiro, throwing him back into it and burst him down. Now, the Fisher did come in and get a counter kill, but it's support for Core, particularly a carry dying for PSG LGD. Gaming Gladiators continue to get the better of PSG LGD, despite the fact, though, the net worth is very even. Even, but this can get out of control very fast because your Core heroes are going to continue to ramp up on the lanes for gaming. These aren't like early lane winners. They're that medium to late game laning phase lane winner. That's what the Morphling shines. He just starts to out-CS you every hit. Visage can't do much about it. 
Sniper as well. This is where he hits his stride. He's going to start pushing your ways in with the shrapnel, threaten you with assassinate or some of the higher points of the headshot. And you is just getting pummeled bottom behind in levels versus Duracho. So every time these mid skirmishes are happening, the side lane for LG is not going that well. Oh God, the illusions are going to stop his TP back. Nothing to say. He's in trouble. The assassinate keeps on being put on him. He's going to have to dodge it somehow. It's out of mana. Yeah, he's dead. He is dead, dead, dead. At least he took it like a man. Yeah, he ran charging at his enemy. Here's that collapse that it's just hard to stop. Product of the Sniper Ember matchup. Gaming will always crash on mid if they have that mid lane advantage and they usually pick for it and Quinn usually plays for it. They usually hit it around that six minute mark. Work again here. Looks like the Wizard Runes are going to be split. At least something going even for LGD. The Ancients. The stacking. Our gaming continues as they get both ancient camp stacked, another large camp for Quinn in that triangle. Four camp stacked on the last round alone. That's why this team is terrifying. Yeah. They won a lot of games. And get stacks, it's pretty tough to beat. Yep. They have their choice. Like they're either gonna win lanes into running you, they're gonna win lanes into out efficiency in you, and either way, that is a large gold amount to overcome. So LG are gonna have to find it somewhere in here. Probably off some Ember gameplay from NTS coming back in here. Just skirmishing. Maybe get the birds up for new and you can fight around those. It's a pretty decent bird game. There's not a lot to answer them just running in. Can help kill some Tombstone a little bit. Can put them on the Rubik. Rubik hates playing against Visage for that reason. But his items are going to be very slow. You're not going to have auras from the bird for a long time in this game. Well, the stacks continue. These are getting juicy. Mm. Farm and chill episode. They've got double carries too. And they're pushing in towers. I mean, they did a bunch of damage to mid tower. Now Duraccio and Celery are coupling together to zone out new, but they have extended pretty far here. Have they gone Blank too far? There. Four heroes all of a sudden. Oh, got him. He There's could not more strength fast enough. Invis NTS paying off. Biggest kill on the map they could get. Surprises mm. Duraccio. And that push past the tower does not work out for gaming as they're just trying to keep new from getting six. But LGD say enough is enough on this lane. I want my birds. I want them now. He'll get them. Very different matchup now against the Morphlin. Or NTS, man. Somebody, somebody's got to get him out of this lane. Well, once his tower dies, he'll be out of it. That is true. There's two more stacks. He's here. He's just going to rush the Crimson Guard. Pretty damn good Crimson game. What is the answer from LG for that? I'm not seeing it for a very, very long time here. Just going to get free objective taking the gaming, which means they're going to be able to claim first Roshan in this game at the rate they're going and just push LGD down. This is getting concerning in terms of what do you do versus that timing push that's going to come out from the Beast, the Undying, and the Morphling. Put an Aegis on the Sniper, even he can siege for you. If you let them get away with this, it's going to be a very early high ground, and you do not have a lot of outspam. Yeah, normally you'd say, okay, Dusa can stand in front of these pushes and not only farm, but decent outspam. Unfortunately, he's matched up against a Sniper who just outranges you. So then, you know, you try and stand in front of it. Sniper, you just... Shoot him a whole bunch. Dusa feels pretty bad about that. There's definitely the ranged king in this game. No doubt about it. NTS will pick up a double damage. Very nice rune for him as the skirmishing happens bottom. He's going to swing down for this. Try and use that DD to kick Duraccio out of here so they can claim a tier one. They'll claim his courier. Duraccio's in trouble if he doesn't know this ember rotation's coming, but he will slowly back out just in time. This is a large committal from LGD. A lot of time for their ember to run down here, sit on this wave, and it's likely going to result in the loss of their mid tower as well as Quinn just shoves it in with the max shrapnel and a catapult wave of his own. It's gone. Didn't get the last hit though. Noob. <laughs> Noob. No last hit here either. What are these guys doing? Get your act together, team. Siege wagons are just too powerful, man. Can't stop them.
All right, maybe we can push out mid and use this double damage. Nothing to say he's been holding on to it for a bit. I feel like it's uh... time to get active. So you're not going to out farm this sniper. You have to pick that very carefully, though. You fight into gaming and they just take a defensive oriented engagement around the tombstone, around the tower or something with sniper going ham. Sounds like a death sentence. Yeah, and your lineup is not that great at aggressively going on them. I mean, what do you have to throw out? You can fissure someone into a chains? Birds on them? It's okay. Hate. That's kind of it. You're getting this smoke up to the dude already stuff. done. God, that is a fast Crimson Guard. I mean, they're going to get behind these guys. The Crimson Guard might be able to limit the damage enough that it's fine. I actually circle back all the way around there. Now they're going to go for the dive on Shiro. What they may not realize is how many heroes are here. That double damage starts going to work already. Ace and Celery a little bit low. Crimson Guard plus the Primal Roar. Oh, nice. Fisher. Fisher. Three-man Fisher. And the, the first drop onto three as well. It's a beauty. LGD. BSG, LGD just too good at the team fighting. Even then, the fight was difficult to win, I would say. They only got a two-for-two two trade off. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be so much better than it was, but yeah. you have to keep in mind that's fighting into an 11 minute Crimson Guard tombstone when you are kind of missing support levels here. And that DD ran out. What NTS wished he could have saved it just a little bit longer. That's a great fight for LGD, though. They get the three man Fissure and the two three man Bird Stuns into the Stone Gaze. And they get that sniper kill. That's a big sniper kill to get. Yeah. If you're going to pick one hero out of everything right now to take, it's him. Is that really fair enough? Fair enough, you're pretty good. All right, PSG LGD, <laughs> you, got, you got some moves, you got some moves. I've never seen that expression from Quinn before. Usually it's, ugh, it's disgust. Maybe that's uh, the maturation of a major winner right there. You know, true, he's yeah. moved on from the, the frustration to the begrudging respect. It's all grown up. I mean, if there's anything we've learned about Dota players, it's uh, once they start winning some tournaments, they definitely even out a bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many TI winners have had perfectly sane reactions. Well, Neo is starting to come back in this game. Build up some ores. I like the early drumming of the Vlads. I think this is the type of build you want in this game. I would not have liked the Flactory, for example. I think it's not adding anything to the team fight. And their lineup is really about boosting up the Ember and the Medusa. You got to play for them. Play for them to outscale and out damage gaming in the head-on fight. Also, just being able to stick in the fight longer. The drum's going to help you bring down the Tombstone, which means you need more survivability to be able to stand against what ace is going to bring in terms of his own firepower which is going to outmatch you for a while just because he had so many damn stacks to accelerate him we'll claim top tower here he see ace gets the last hit man you see that this there guy's was, a professional there was literally look nothing. at him he's there a was, goddamn professional there was literally nothing contesting this man will never waste the last single hit. single creep beautiful gameplay for that last hit. absolutely beautiful <laughs> unlike the rest of these scrubs Ace is, though. He is kind of the professional. Yeah. Man moves from carry to off lane. I feel like he could be a hitman to in another life. level. Just doesn't. He's, yeah, he's very chill. Like, if you're going to pick a Dota player to go and assassinate a political figure, I feel like I'm taking Ace. <laughs> Don't want him to be registered anywhere. I mean, you would take Puppy, right? But I feel like Puppy's too recognizable. Sure. I mean, the moment he gets close to somebody, I mean, immediately is... the, the guards is up. Yeah, there's, you know? there's only so many political figures that can mysteriously die to machete death before <laughs> before Interpol starts to catch on. So I'll take an ace, you know. I feel who like is, he gets the job done. Who is this masked man? And you know he's Seven getting... feet tall, weird dude, wielding a machete. <laughs> who could it be? Also, you know Ace is getting that last hit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, this segment's gone on too long as <laughs> game have decided you to pick up the pace. There's a joke here somewhere <laughs> about the sniper in a grassy knoll. 
No, there's not. <laughs> it's really not, my friend. <laughs> you should leave that one for another duo. Coming up later, Quinn will strike yeah, cool. down his foe, claim an Aegis on the Diffusal Sniper build again. Something we saw in that other, uh, was it Kiyotaka Sniper did this? Pretty interesting yeah. development for the hero. They must just feel really good with the damage and like some extra slow when you get gap close in the fight. I mean, I like it. I like it more in this game against like I think Ember Spirit is pretty susceptible to that burn, right? For sure, that's pretty nice. The slow is also good versus him if he gap closes you. He, then he can't like follow up Redmond on top of you if you pike away, for example. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like it this game more than the other one, but it did work pretty well in the other one. And yeah, when you have Aegis, that means you can go up farther in the fight. And just be a Chad. We'll see how much gaming decide to push with this Aegis. Again, early high ground is on the menu. If they can force a situation where that happens because of how fast Ace has built these auras online. It's a nice ward for LGD. And they are gonna get an opening. Lots of heals. God damn. Mech and the Crimson Guard. Stellar doesn't even die. Okay, now they could deward that high ground. They know 100% awards there. Oh, they still get the opening. Primal Roar. Boy, that was a little embarrassing for PSG LGD. They thought they had a free jump, free kill. Goes the other way. I'd say it was embarrassing. I'd be embarrassed. Tell <laughs> Zhao ate that. I will. You need definitely lacking some extra poke damage if NTS is not with them. But then you're just committing too many heroes for these little goes, which also feels bad. They form into a bird stun, but no follow up. They will bring Shiro in the game to defend their tower and chase Fisher Ace. Block. Oh, that's nice a nice one. Fisher block from Planet. That's a damage Crimson though. Crimson Guard though, still. It is a real problematic for PSG LGD. I mean, you said it was going to be a problem at 11 minutes, 18 minutes in. It still continues to be one. Vistage and Dusa cannot put damage through that item just yet. They need Nullifier at some point in this game. Probably only going to be Shiro who can build it. He wants to get this Butterfly build up, which I agree with. You need Butterfly on Dusa in this game for sure. I think you kind of want to hit this Butterfly into like a Blink Nullifier or something. You kind of want all of these at some point, but which order you build them is very important here, especially when you're playing into the Aegises, which gaming have. Another roar goes out on another support. Another roar, another kill. Ace is just walking into a man. The Hitman strikes again. As LG continue to have no answer for the group up here of gaming with the sustain, the utility, the auras, the push. Shiro is half to defend these objectives, not something he wants to be doing right now. Something he will have to do. Maybe let NTS show out the waves and gather up that farm. This is going to be a hold the line type of game. Bend, but do not break. And at some point, strike back on an overextension. I mean, unless they... Like, wipe gaming gladiators, I'm still concerned that, like, yeah, you bend and bend and bend, but what are you bending towards? At what point are they going to feel good about their late game? I feel late? like never. I don't know. Actually, I feel like they have a decent shot late game, actually. Really? I thought Sniper Dusa is just a matchup that always feels good for Sniper. Generally, yes. But I think Dusa has some gameplay. If you get Swift Blink, you can just go on top of him with a Stone Gaze and chase him down. Sniper dies pretty fast. Shiro's not that tanky anymore with the way people are itemizing him. He's going to Hurricane Pike you. Uh, I mean, I know. He has Hurricane Pike. He has a grenade. He has a bunch of utility behind him. I'm not saying it's easy. But you do have some decent long-range pokes. Shaker Pugna is a very skate, scary late-game support duo. Can't really underestimate what this duo can do in terms of supporting their cores and being able to choose when they commit to the fight. I like uh, that aspect of it, but... I like that aspect of it, too. I mean, uh, like, at least those two will out undo Undying plus one. Right. It's just a question of are you going to get there. That's the bigger thing. Like, we're discussing the late game. It's not easy. It's not straightforward. I just don't even know if you're going to get there at this rate. I think the next Aegis gaming are definitely going higher on, and that is what you have to gear up for right now. This type of smoke from gaming is 
Very tough, though. I'm surprised they made this. I feel like usually this team is happy just farming and playing the map, dewarding, shoving in waves to take objectives like a tier two or an outpost. This is like one of those smokes you cross the whole map to try and catch a hero, and then when it fails, you're gaining nothing off it, and you're losing a lot of time. I wonder why they chose to make it here. Maybe they just felt like it would land, but either way, they're just going to lose their Aegis timer here, pushing bottom wave, maybe go for the tier two down here. Lads up for ace as well. This guy's got every aura under the book. Every aura in the book, every under the aura sky. in the book, and under the sun. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to say anything. I was just sitting there smiling, and Avery, Avery knew. I think I'm losing my mind these days. Yeah, it's that dementia we're talking about. Oh, not dementia, dyslexia. <laughs> under the book's a pretty good expression, too, though. You could hide a lot of stuff under a book. Depends how big the book is. It's like a atlas, you know? Hmm. Not one of those short novels? No. No, indeed. Is this going to be a short novel of a game for LGD? Or can they start to find some pickoffs? That's a massive one right there. Ooh. Quinn, you're up too far in mid lane solo, and you pay the price. LG make a quick smoke, find the Dwarven Sniper. Just as I call for it, is this the start of a comeback? It only takes a couple sniper deaths to suddenly not feel so great about those matchups, especially when you have a team with two other cores taking a lot of farm off the map. I mean, Quinn is third on their net worth, right? Yeah. They're not really giving the sniper huge priority here. These other two cores really want their items. Duraccio is going for that Ags and will have it to take away the Medusa. That's another part of this game that really hurts LGD's late game chances. Pop, nothing to say. Now he's the one. Up a bit too far, both mid laners getting caught. I mean, Is he going to use the Aghanim Scepter on the Dusa to yes. take away those stats? Yes. Or you, you don't think he's going to turn into the Earthshaker? No. The Earthshaker? No, it's not worth it anymore. You want to steal the Ajin attacks me from Dusa and, and okay. snake it back and have this chance. Duracho really likes this matchup. I think he's talked about it before. He feels like this is one of his favorite anti-Medusa heroes. So he's just going to play to slay Shiro, remove the late game potential from LGD. Of course, he can steal the Shaker. He can steal the, the Ember. These are not bad steals at all. Just depends on how you want to play the fight. But the Ags going on the Dusa is going to be the highest value in terms of the, the, the stat steal here. Sure. And I don't think the turning into the Earth Shaker necessarily, like, that's the... It's not like it was in the back in the day. Yeah, the Enchant Totem also against the Dusa specifically may not be that effective. Another... Like, it's not a hero you burst. No. Shiro will again defend his objectives here to try and hold some map for LGD. He's still very farmed. The fact he's joined all these defenses and is still decently ahead of the gaming course here. This is a lot about how efficient he's been in this game as he'll push towards that third item, Scotty. Still no nullifier in sight. LGD are just going to try and push through this with raw damage, I guess. Going AC on you. That will also be a big power spike for LGD to try and contest this next Roshan. If they can finish up AC on the Visage with that Scotty on Medusa, suddenly you have Vlad's AC and Drum. It's a lot of physical amp here just going into gaming. If you can kill the Tombstone and survive the initial burst from Duraccio, might be able to just take that extended engagement, get multiple Fissures off. That's the dream. Yeah, Especially you were talking you about the, the, the last time we watched the Visage, you said that you thought the right click build on visage is viable i mean it's better than it used to be for sure in yeah. fact he's universal and you can gain a bunch of stats on hero as base damage goes way up 4.1 damage per level so i'm gonna assume he was one of the universal heroes that did not get nerfed i don't think his, his game. damage gain or anything like that got nerfed yeah in fact he did not get touched at all on the path it's nice i like that new is building this Type of item setup that not only helps his other two cores, but it's going to help him scale as well and create his individual damage threat. I think whenever you can do kind of both on Visage, those are when those games feel the best. Because then let's say this game goes late and you somehow get like a third Roshan, and you can just put an Ags on the Visage. Then you're you're like totally online and a huge, huge threat to these supports, right? Yeah, you I mean, even the sniper, you could just fly up right up to him. Exactly. And really? all these things, I mean, you have to play for them if you're LGD because of how rough that early game was and how bad these matchups are. 
So you need to think about these things as you go down the stretch. Kind of set yourself up for success if you fall into that situation. I mean, it's likely that that Ags would go to NTS, but hey, he might be able to build his own anyway. And AC is done on the bird as LG smoke up to try and contest this Roshan. They're going to fight Darachio on the river. Are they going to be what able to kill hell? him, though? Why is he here? Waveform. This is a Darachio Three death. Three seconds. He can't burn his mana fast enough. They got the chains on him. Oh, it is enough. So they will get the Roshan, but it comes at a hefty cost. In fact, you can see the TP coming in from Shiro. He They're going to try and catch. What's up? They're going to try and catch these heroes yeah, before they slip in. away. Oh, the birds. Oh, God, he was so close to spotting the sniper. That would have been the kill. Gaming lucky to get out of there. Yeah. That was a Duraccio death 100%. I don't know what the hell he is doing in that river while his whole team is rushing and LGD are off the map. So LGD at least gained something out of that, but that really was an objective they wanted to contest there with the AC timing. Just like 10 seconds too late. Will not be able to get there in time. I guess Taraccio ran interference. He got him. <laughs> he did. He soaked up a lot of tension. AC plus level 15, so lots of minus armor on the Vistage now. I mean, LG are keeping up with this game. Yeah. They have reduced the gold lead to 1k here, despite gaming being in a dominant position with those early auras. And these auras are not going to give you that push potential forever. I still don't understand where Shiro is finding the farm he's finding in this game. He is up to a blink and going that swift blink after the Scotty. That is the big window where you have Scotty, you blink on this sniper. He cannot run that far. Stonegate is going to give you the extra move speed on top of the swift blink and you're just going to stick on top of him. You're going to have to roar the Medusa, have to drop an early tombstone. I kind of like what LGD are building up, honestly. The physical damage is going to be insane, and they're going to have the long-range poke to start on you. They're going to be able to fissure a support, run the birds in, throw a snake. Then you have Swift Blink follow-up. A lot of the hero not have to take the straight-up five-on-five. What are you squinting at, man? Oh, Shiro was... Uh, he <laughs> had the tier three item. And he chose the Dandelion Amulet, but he sent it back. He was like, well, the Grobo is just better. Oh. So he chose his item and then he threw it back. And I was like, what is he doing? I mean, even but, a little extra attack speed is nice from here against the Morphling Axe. Mew is... What are you doing up there, Mew? Uh, yeah, he's very far up alone. I guess he got the tier two, but he got denied. He lost his birds. Kind of a rare misstep from him. I guess he... Oh, he tried to grab him because he had the... Uh, oh, it was actually nothing to say to DD. He tried to jump forward, turn into the Ember Spear, and shackle him down. Nothing to say was too fast. You went up to Duracho and said, hold my beer. And of course, Morphling took it as Morphling is liquid. I think I would, like, turn him, like, a light brown, though. Too detailed for me. They're just going to cut the wave. And the gladiators do have one melee creep leading the charge, though. This is your second Go get him, buddy. Helm of the Overlord and Greaves up for gaming here. Incredibly strong aura based timing. She's on Duraccio, so he basically has a second life unless you can burst them all in. I got defense once more. Shiro will have to return. I think the glyph kills this push. Yeah, NTS, decent job here. Finding a lot of farm. I mean, he has out-farmed Quinn in this game. I mean, maybe some of that is how much of Quinn's teammates are taking away from the map as well, right? Gaming like to build net worth as a squad, not just on any individual player. But it does feel like LGD are finding a decent amount in the periods where gaming are grouping up, which is what you want to have happen. Quinn will finish MKB. All that Adusa evasion going by. And the Fisher spams, the high ground defense is strong at this point for LGD just hard very very difficult a tip over to Duraccio I wonder what that was for either way he's got Heaven's Halberd now done so I guess the game plan for nothing to say is just try to jump to the back line and uh, annoy the sniper he's not going to kill him but he can Halberd him at least Halberd's nice for the sniper and the Morphling here also gives him a little extra survivability until Queen already had the MKB Kind of sucks here, but still some extra tankiness. 40 seconds left in the Aegis. 
Gaming Gladiator is going to have to go hard on this push or not go at all. And it seems like the call from Taraccio is not at all. Curious. They do have Tormentor, a uh, second Tormentor, and Wisdom Rune to pick up. So maybe it's just farm and chill. Not farm and chill for LGD, man. They know their timings in this game, and they are smoking out down mid behind this wave. This is a pretty decent smoke. Should catch someone from Gaming Lingering here trying to push it back out. Jungle, they want the sniper. Not going to find them. Gaming Gladiators will circle the wagons, head back to the tier three. Smoke themselves. Still a cheese on Doraccio here, who finished up that Scotty. Hit his level 20. Well, that is a satisfying sound. It's LGD's turn to play the defensive. Circle their own wagons. It's funny how smoke, how important smokes have become over the last like four or five years of Dota and how teams have gotten really good at being able to read each other's smokes. I mean, these are five man smokes, so these in theory are the easiest to read. NTS will get behind them with a nice run and start cutting the wave again. So the lead is still not building here for gaming, despite locking LGD in the base for most of this. And that swift blink is closing in for Shiro. That has to be the window where LGD start to find something back into this game. Because otherwise, this Medusa is just going to start falling off of it. You're getting mo you're getting too many cores on gaming scaling into her. I think the Visage is a little too far behind, but. Once you have that swift blink for like the, the 10 minute period there, your team fight's strong, man. You just blink in with stone gaze. There isn't a direct answer here for gaming. Unless you land that clutch roar. It's just gonna be difficult for the Deuce to put out damage between more flings stealing the stats, the Heaven's Halberd and Pramble Roar on the Beastmaster, the general range problem against the sniper. I mean, that's why they want to smoke into gaming so they get the jump. The Shaker can also provide some lockdown duration. So when the Deusa blinks in, someone's getting fissured and then chain stunned. That should be enough to take out a hero. Or at least give you a decent advantage for the fight. But you have to be able to find that jump. Gaming with the Beastmaster, with the extra vision in the summons. Dodging those smokes, not giving an opportunity for LG to come back in this game. Yeah, how do you get the initiation when you are on the back foot map control wise and you're matched up against a Beastmaster? So it's very tough. they have the extra vision. You basically just have to take the fights that are going to be mandatory, which are usually the Roshans. Or you can bait it out. Turning into the Vistage, this may actually be a yeah, an great open. opportunity for PSG LGD. I'm sure Shiro's like, yeah, that's not on me. Time to go, boys. He's just clearing through some summons, trying to force the fight. There's the blink. Thanks forward. Slowing down Celery. Celery drops the tombstone as far away as possible before he dies. They'll deal with him, deal with his tombstone. There's that poke kill. That is the part of this draft that is hard for gaming to respond to. Because you have to keep the formation with protecting the sniper, letting the Morphling find the target. But the second LG kill one support, it opens up the flanks and suddenly Jumping in for more, nothing to say. Braving the Primal Roar, which doesn't come out until now. Ace is tanky, but there's too many heroes in the nicely positioned from the Dusa as well. Pops the Stone Gaze between the Beastmaster and the Sniper, but they couldn't do enough. Nothing to say, now low, and Yu's gonna be left behind, it seems. Turns into the stone form, but he comes back in. Yo, guys, we're fighting this, right? <laughs> we're fighting this, guys, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think LG definitely did not feel confident fighting that without resources on NTS. I feel like he's too much of their damage. Oh, Tofu, you went a little too far, my friend. Gotta respect the chain stuns from the Earthshaker and the turnaround potential. LG just need to keep playing off this. This is the best aspect they have going for them right now. The Fissure chain stun with the Medusa blinking in, picking off a target, and then doing that again. It's just hard to do that on a core because it's not that much damage. It's enough to kill these supports, but as we saw there on Ace, nowhere close to taking down the gaming cores. Still has a cheese up as well. I think you should be able to combine cheeses. What would you make out of it? Out of two cheeses? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, fondue? Take uh, two cheeses, a couple of fairy fires, uh, maybe a salve, and make a charcuterie board. Oh, there you go. 
provides plus three all stats and 800 HP region. <laughs> Speaking of which, when was the last time you saw a block of cheese? Uh, never. I think I saw it in one professional game. Achiever's going to be very disappointed. Nobody wants the refresher shard, man. Celery the pack mule will pick it up. Undoubtedly to give it to somebody else. I mean, surely Ace wants it. Double Roar. Double all these auras. Double Halberd. Pretty damn nice. He's also the one who has the slot, so... Oh, never mind. He doesn't have a slot. So, Dorachio holds on to his original cheat. Another one will go on to Celery who doesn't have the slot. And Quinn will carry that Aegis with his... MKB along with Dorachio is completed, so double evasion piercing up for gaming with the third Aegis here. Is this enough to try and force the high ground? That is the question. They've been very patient in this game so far. The lead has not built, but they are still in control. Soon gonna be Shiva's and the next item for the Dusa. There it is. MKB now done, so That's damage is portrait. ramping up. Is there a tier four token item better than Grovebow? Penta Edge Sword. And 45 damage greater than 100 range and 20 attack speed? Yeah, probably. Especially when you have the Swift Blink build. Sure. I don't think you're too reliant on the attack range here. You just want attack speed and damage. You deal with the Morphling Ags and kill heroes as fast as possible off the limited stun durations you have. I, I guess you could still main. It doesn't say that main is specifically melee. That's true. I wonder if it's a reduced percentage. Probably not. Here. Thought about that before. Game the Gladiators are going to be taking this tier two, and we'll see if they go for the high ground. Three minutes left on the Aegis, so we've got some time to think about it, but surely, 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 the time is coming. NTS finished up an entire Shiva's during this phase. Yeah. So he's a very tanky frontliner now. Going to be harder to bring down. He needs to create some space. Well, not a buyback for a high ground defense fight like this, though. And there are not a lot of buybacks on LG side. They are just buying out to try and take the engagement. In fact, there's only the supports. Gaming, however, don't necessarily know that. So them committing on a core is not as straightforward as they can just all in the Medusa and that's game. Yeah, all in it. All in a do son in particular is always a dangerous, dangerous tactic. Quinn, meanwhile, speech. taking the very conservative approach of just poking away at a tier three. Well, this will probably take another 10 minutes, but eventually they will win. Is there anything to reposition this sniper? I don't think so. There's no four staffs. No pike, so there's a four staff on Y. I guess you could run up and try and force him. He has Hazel Lens too. People don't think about these aggressive four staffs enough in these base situations. I mean, because otherwise, if you, like, you have to go at some point. I mean, Unless letting the tier three go down does help because it makes him go in a little deeper. Problem is they have full Hawk Vision and you still have Aegis on the Sniper. He has Hurricane Pike. You can try and flank gaming. Shiro is definitely going to try and get some sort of initiation, but the Hawk sees them, and they know it too, actually. Pinged it. I think LGD are happy to give up a Rax for an Aegis if it comes to it, but this is pretty damn slow. Gaming are not getting out a lot of this. Going to go on the Sniper now. Okay. Try and take away that Aegis. Oh, they actually went for him. Primal Roar being used. Shiro going to be protected by the Decrepify as he backs away from the Scotty Duraccio. Got the Stone Gaze out of him. That's pretty big. A little bit surprised, especially since he was very, he was pretty clean. I mean, why is always there to give you the heals and decrepify that you need? They can't go on the Dusa. So the great Dusa Wars continue. LGD will hold their base. Celery will take a quick break. Line has been drawn. Tofu says, guys, we shall go here. Sit on the triangle? What? 
It, the, the line <laughs> may be drawn, but I don't know what it means. Okay, Ooh, now that that's an arrow. I know what that means. Jirachi says, I shall farm all of this out. And he says... Oh. <laughs> Shut up about all farm, you're kidding. <laughs> Josh says, guys, I just need like two more items. We can... <laughs> it's like you said that two items ago. I think Quinn's just reminiscing about how he crushed this guy mid. He's probably thinking about all those great days on Quincy crew. He's like, oh man. <laughs> and I... The games weren't the, this hard back then, dude. Wish I had my old captain back. Yeah, Seller, you you're great, great and everything, but <laughs> let me just say, I played with the best of the best. That's right. <laughs> So he's frozen in anguish. And he, of you course, is me. talking about uh, the great North American captain. That's right. One of the best of all time. That's right. PPD. Of course. Those optic days, the highlight of Quinn's career. We'll get a breather. Gus, the internal conflict that is raging between Y and you. See it on their face. They're furious. Too violent person lashing battle of wit practically and ripping his hair out <laughs> should be a requirement that every player has the cat ears hate the cat ears so much. <laughs> i hate him so much so stupid. I wish Quinn wore some cat ears though. No, he that. would look great in them. Yeah, he would. That's the missed touch here. Keep that camera in focus, sir. He was to cheating now. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little fuzzy there. We weren't sure what you were up to. Oh, I, oh, oh a smile out of you. What do you think? You, someone made a smile. joke. That was about a damn good joke. Holy crap! Yeah, that that, that man. Rarely smiles for oh my god. Oh no! He's gone. Celery! Celery, come back! I bet Quinn's just telling him st like stories about his days and <laughs> he pulls out that southern accent. Yeah, we used to go down in the bayou, fish some crawdads. He's like, what the hell are you talking about, man? Y'all boys ever heard of noodling? <laughs> PC crash ready! Oh, time to go! LG, you gotta smoke up. Look to get back in this game. So we're gonna hold the high ground even though his camera's dead, his soul is alive, and the undying shall persist. Cheese up. Multiple cheeses for gaming. I don't think anything's gonna happen. We I think they're gonna wait three and a half minutes. The, for fight, ages. Is, the fight is looming. Or Roshan, rather. It's gonna break out real soon here. I feel it. Something weird's gonna happen and they're just gonna clash, and I think Quinn's gonna die. Can I change my prediction? <laughs> no. Okay. Aesthetic cap for Duraccio. Hmm. Wants to make sure he's not caught. Uh, Doesn't want to get chainsawed. on. Oh, yeah, mor morphin strength the wrong way. Doesn't want to get another flame thread. Interesting idea. Ten. To there's been 19 kills in 42 minutes. It's been a quiet one. Slow burner right here. Both teams are crunching their way towards that late game. LGD happy to continue to hold. <laughs> Planet still rocking the Philly stone. Hell yeah. Oh, here's some action. Get that gold, baby. Shiro will get some of his mana back. Thank you. Close call. We almost, somebody oh, almost took damage. Yeah, it was too intense for me. Barely handle that. Need a breather. Meanwhile, nothing to say. It's just going to keep pushing the lanes in. Say, okay, do something, gladiators. Otherwise, about to have a nullifier. That is a big item for LG to pick up here. I was talking about that 30 minutes ago, but they'll finally get to it. Another smoke from gaming as they've drawn a circle around nothing. Or should I say, nothing to say. Hey, hey, hey. But he has those cat ears. He, he hears everything. This is a tough smoke to land. Courier, Shiro's courier killed with Lincoln's on it. It's a lot of missing net worth here. He's got a shield rune. So even if they 
find him here. Spots. Oh, Telkinesis Primal War. A little bit of an overlap here, but too much damage. Oh. The shield rune could not protect him against that kind of fire firepower. Almost unlucky he ran into Celery there, the one with the gem. Yeah. But, hey, that works out for gaming. They finally find something on the map. 80 seconds without that pesky ember on the battlefield, and he has no buy. Time for gaming to run down some lanes and maybe poke the high ground again. They feel confident enough doing it without the Aegis. Link on Ace as well, so Roar up in 30 can maybe force the initiation. You got everything you need here. In fact, Celery has two greater healing lotuses. And Lock a cheese. cheese. Wait, he has it, doesn't he? Uh, okay, the, the Lotus, is it the right kind of Lotus? I always get the two of them combined, the, the second level and the third level. Saw, this I don't know which level. one is which. Oh, there's a fight. Shiro's in. They're going for the Echo Sun. Everything they have for the sniper, but it's not even close. They had too many saves. He used the Disperser to back out real quick, but now the heals can start coming in from Gaming Gladiators. They'll get him back up to full, and they'll go again. They do have 15 seconds little till nothing to say is back up, though. Yeah, these soul rips plus the grease from Celery. There's so much sustain. On top of two cheeses on their hero. Oh, look at Duraccio. He's like, uh, draw their attention in the mid. I'll take Ooh, the bottom sneaky. lane. Turns into the Earth Shaker for a quick escape if needed. And some quick building damage. Yeah. Claims that Range Rax gets out the mid tier. Three goes down as well as Quinn almost kills Y. He smokes for the assassinate. Doesn't dodge it in time, but still lives. And now you are having to defend two sides at once. Shiro cannot be everywhere. That's where nothing to say comes in. Uh, he's back. He's got the nullifier too. Uh, you know, that last kill on Sniper, if you had an Ember Spirit there with a nullifier to stop the Decrepify and everything, that could have been a kill. Could see it. It's possible. Actually, very important. He managed to turn around initially. Yeah, still got still gazed fight. afterwards, but. It's a big deal. Still, that burst is there. Like, LG can chain it up and commit on it, especially if the sniper's facing a bad direction. Roach on time. Both teams making their way for it. Could it try? And, oh, wait. Yeah. Are they? Okay, they're going to stop Duraccio or try to stop him, but they're already set up for Roshan on PSG LGD. Gaming Gladiators got to get over there. If they can actually get the Roshan, I'm sure they'd be happy to trade out Rax for it. Duraccio has bots too, so he can guarantee get to this fight unless NTS gets a clutch cancel on him. But LGD are happy with this trade if they can commit and get it. Shrapnel reveals it at half L. Shiro going to be in trouble here. Primal Roar going to be used against him. Celery Rock up here celery on the high ground. Well, turning into the Earthshaker and getting a good Fisher to block out Shiro. He's just not getting any damage done. He blinks over to the side. Planet's going to be the target here. Dorachio tries to catch him, but a blink away. Managed to get him out, and he misses. Like two. You need help. Jump forward. Dorachio does go to hit the two-man Echo Slam, but finally he falls. Shiro is struggling to be able to keep with these heroes at the same time. Finally pops the Stone Gaze, but it's going to be used as a retreat. Just can't hit anything. He's getting stunned for so long in these fights. Gamer is able to wear through the Medusa. And now Roach is falling. He's back in. Oh, Did he get it? Take it, but no. The Aegis is snatched up by he Quinn. Nothing. And he turns around now with the Manta. Oh, actually, they can kill Quinn once. Nothing to say. Sticks onto Jirachi, who is out of mana as well. He's They're running out of resources. Spot. Oh, Quinn, he's going to die a second time. And the he team can't really help him out. That's not enough. Shiro out of mana, Shiro though. out of mana, but he gets a Mystic Snake back into play. He gets a little bit more mana. Why Smile's going to start healing him up, healing him up, healing him up. He's good. And now, Telkinesis to get Tarachio out of there. Primal Roar, too. But the Earthshaker is going to jump in. Hits the Fisher on the two. Don't think they know about Tofu, but they catch one. That Meanwhile, was a mid. Double Tombstone fight. Just clearing through it. Tarachio back to mid with this huge wave. Trying to exert some talent. Rax pressure. I mean, he got one, but LG should be super happy with that engagement because the start of this looked pretty damn bad. Dorachu got on the back line. He's just killing Planet. Amazing decrep from Y. Saves Planet, buys a huge amount of time in this fight. He gets Blink off, forces Dorachu to re-engage again into the Fissures, chain-stunning two of them. Just so much time bought in this engagement that is wasting the clock here. Tofu has to buy back, and this is all space for NTS to get to the fight because he had to walk all the way here. Crazy call by 
Yoshi LGD to walk back into this one. Yeah, and the fact Shiro gets back in this pit and even contests this is absurdly good for them in the first place. Imagine he picked any of that up. That's yeah. more one-sided there. He got nothing. Yeah, he dropped his treads to try and get something, but you're right, nothing. And I think got one of the refresher shards got used in that engagement, I think, by Celery for a second tombstone. <laughs> That was cheese and ages for Quinn, as he doesn't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I think Quinn was surprised <laughs> that they went back into that one. It's like, what the hell is Shiro doing here? Oh, he's killing me. No, he said, what the heck is Shiro doing? Of course. <laughs> Quinn only that. used an accurate yeah. description, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, a tombstone drop off death. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, Refresher Shard must have got used somewhere else in there. I didn't even see who got a pop. They got a, a gem. Oh, they on have it. it. They still have it on. Oh, Planet has it. So, LG actually did get a shard out of that Roche fight. I was wondering where it went. That's a second Fissure, second Chain Stun, second Echo. Pretty big deal here. Of course, there is still one on Celery, so he can instant drop two Tombstones in a fight if they want to play that game. Didn't happen there. Holy's up his sleeve. And the Lincolns will finally be delivered to Shiro. He has nothing left to buy except a Moon Shard. Moon Shard, yeah, that's it. Wow, wow, wow. Team is going late. And it's heating up. Nullifier done for NTS. Hits his level 25. He's got Slight of Fist charges. This comes down if they get on top of the Sniper. It, like that engagement, once they're on top of him, he just melts. That is not a man fight Quinn is winning. He does not have Satanic. Does not have extra displacement. He's Bronco's out, in, but Shiro. He's all alone. And then he got Nullified. He jumps in and helps him out. The Telekinesis only going to take him so far. Enough to say we'll finish him off. Now with the BKB. The Echo Slam. Double Echo. Used. Double Echo with the Fisher, but Duraccio had that cap, and he was able to get off his BKB as a result. A great neutral item pickup. But Might Shiro have just saved his in. Life, But Shiro is mowing down Quinn and the rest of Game and Gladiators. Oh, this late game is heating up for LGD. Dunk the double straight on his head to send a message as you collect two gems. And that initiation from Ace is just way too far away from the team. Maybe he didn't expect all of LGD to be there, but at this point in the game, you got to know they're backing each other up in the ball. He had no damage in sight. Just puts Gaming in an awkward position, and suddenly their backline collapses. Quinn is running for his life, but he got Ags stunned by the snake. Cold-blooded for a reason. He's regretting that jump as Oh, back into the game. Taraccio just managed to get a pick off on you in the top area as they were kind of split up to try and keep the lanes in. It's a very big find. But is it as big as double damage on Shiro right now? Oh, man. The rune of the gods and the rune of destiny here will instantly form a dig. Force the cliff out. Taraccio is not going to come back and fight this unless his team is up. They're just gonna He's going to go tier four. This double damage might have just won him the game here. I mean, we'll see. It's definitely gaming gladiators will definitely be able to fight this. They don't even have to use the buyback on the sniper, but. Well, do you go back for the throne with no glyph? It seems like that little pause of glyph was enough for them to reconsider. They'll just get the one lane of barracks, which will help some of this uh, lane pressure that's constantly out. Shiro has just been a deity this game. Does not feel like they're close to killing him, except in that Roshan fight. But you got to remember that Roshan fight, they had multiple lives, and that was him going in solo, where he lost a lot of mana in the initial jump. And then he still has a Pugna sucking him. He Highest goes back for the of growth, last hits. He has 900 last hits. Oh my god. <laughs> what? It's so yeah. many. Does go back for the Grove Bow. You're right. Sometimes that tier two neutral item is just too damn good. You know, you just can't beat the classics. <laughs> is it getting down to the wire? Another five man smoke comes out for Eld. Straight it down the middle. Grinded their way back in this game tremendously. And now they have some buybacks to go into those team fights with. Ember buyback, perhaps the most important one here is NTS can just play super aggressive and come back in off a remnant, especially with the shield rune. It's so tanky, right? 4,500 HP on him without the flame guard being used. Moon shard completed for Shiro as well. He is absolutely capped outside of a bots too to come back in to a fight off a of buyback if he can farm up that gold as well, which Based on his rate, 
should not take long. You have to remember, gaming also do not have their glyph right now. A decent factor if it ever comes down to some sort of throne race or LG can just go into gaming's base because they missed that rare situation, but one that has happened. Hawk reveals a bunch of these heroes. And Game of Gladiators through the side portal to the other side of the map. Nothing to say is not here. He's going to be pushing on mid. Doraccio, he's running out of slots too. Look at him. Turning out of levels. 29. Tannic done. Pretty much only has this Silver Edge, and then he is absolutely capped as well. Shield runes. Time's out for NTS. He will lose some tank ability as he continues to frontline. Knows he has that buyback potential, so he's happy to take the brunt of the jump from gaming if he can force it. And you have to think about this Hex on you too. The instant sense coming out from LGD on a counter initiation play. If you're ace and you blink into Roar, if you get Hex, if you get Fissure Stun, that fight's over. There's no way you're going into that ball with your Beastmaster just getting decimated by the single target damage that LGD have pumped out into this late game. And Ags is on the menu for new as well. That is going to make him a huge initiation threat. On top of everything else, a quick little backdoor. Go unpunished. Big move. As long as he gets out. Which they do see him. Really he doesn't out. have TP yet. Does have Silver Edge, and that's going to be a problem. Yeah, the Sniper's going to go. Silver Edge is too. Missed the Fisher. Only spotted him for a moment. That was not as comfortable a get out as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess they don't have a BKB piercing disable, right? They have stone gaze. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can stone gaze blink in yeah, front of them. You can just swift blink stone gaze. I don't know. Is that worth the range racks? Maybe, but that is a very precarious play to make. Level 25 for Ace here. We'll take those wild axes. Very powerful talent as well. Outputs a lot more damage in these fights. Doesn't have like the old Octarine build with it, but can't ask for everything here. Dorajo will continue the invisible Morphling Rat action. He's spotted Slight Chains. He's still going to go for it. See if he can overwhelm the building before the heroes can get back from LGD. Quinn helping him out. Not quite enough. Now, Shiro doesn't give a damn about the buildings. He wants a far more important prize. That is Roshan, the first one of the game, potentially for PSG LGD, if they can get it. You will take Aegis over this Lincoln slot and give Refresher Shard to New. That's a double hex for the Visage. Very strong in the fights versus the Morphling, versus the Beastmaster initiations. LGD getting that objective at last. Roar on the Pugna, but where's the damage follow-up? Like Less nullifier, but nothing to say. It's right in the mix. Gleipnir on to two. Quinn's forced to be able to use the Hurricane Pike to be able to get away from this Ember Spear. It will finish off Tofu, but the Stone Gaze is locked down. Quinn! Quinn didn't see that one coming. Shiro does almost kill him, but the Silver Edge allows Quinn to be able to get away. Constant Vision problem's going to be abound, but they do manage to find the Beastmaster before he can TP away. Meanwhile, Rax in trouble to Raccio. It's With these heroes dead, mission, okay, though. careful. No fire on him, trying to crawl away. Shiro's gonna keep him slow. These constant snake stuns are a problem too. Fisher stun, he's dead. Oh no. Now they're into a real desperate buyback scenario. You mean all have buybacks? There are 10 up in this game. So you can afford to make a suicide play like that, but it is going to hurt your high ground defense here, especially when LGD have the Aegis and they have a Divine Rapier picked up by Shiro. He wants to end this game right now. He's done messing around. He says, I have enough CS. A thousand is good enough for me. I want the dub to go along with it. And do you have enough to repel LGD? It's going to force all your buybacks here and it might take more. Sniper high ground defense, nothing to scoff at. But Quinn has not been able to maintain the gaps in these fights. They're just getting on top of him and slaying him. And the gap is a whole lot right on here right next to your fountain. And less nothing to say. It can stop you right here with a nullifier. Put him in the tombstone. Got him in the tombstone just in time. But the base, the throne. The base is in trouble. The divine rager is gone. too much. They can't stop him. And Shiro will end it. There was no high ground defense once Shiro was on the high ground. Does not care about the heroes. 
CS and buildings is all I need to end this game. And it only takes 